right. Hi everyone, um, I'm Amelia Rose, and today we're going to talk about how to create a killer Patreon strategy. So this presentation is mostly going to be geared towards beginners, but if you have like um, any advanced questions, you could find me after. I'll be around um, and we can chat. Um, but overall, we're going to talk about how to receive a monthly income from your writing, create super fans, and release content on Patreon. So a little bit about me. I write steamy romance, both contemporary and paranormal. Um, I make six figures a year through subscriptions alone, and I've been a Patreon creator for three years now. I consistently have about 2,000 people who are supporting me monthly, and something that you should know is I've had three subscriptions on Patreon. One of them has failed, one of them has done very well, and one of them is recent, like very recent in a new market. Um, and if you could see the just like a breakdown of my income on the right, about 40 to 45% of my monthly and yearly income is from Patreon. So before we begin, I kind of want to just define what a subscription is compared to Radish and Kindle Vela, as well as Kindle Unlimited. I was talking to some of you yesterday, um, and it was kind of a, some people were a little bit confused. So Radish and Vela are basically where you release serialized content where you have usually short chapters with cliffhangers at the end of them. And readers pay per chapter through something called microtransactions. And usually the people who are reading on or Radish and Vela are something we call casual, casual readers. Um, a lot of people read a lot of books. Same thing with Kindle Unlimited. These are also your casual readers. They read a lot of books, um, a lot of like whale readers who read like 100 plus books a year. Um, but on Kindle Unlimited, you usually, as an author, provide a lot of content in one book. So usually your books are really big, and readers are paying monthly to a large retailer, to, to Amazon, and then they're splitting out those payments. Subscriptions and Patreon is a little bit different because you can release literally any type of content that you can think of. So you could release books, you could release audiobooks, you could release art prints. Um, I know somebody who does weekly like live streams with his readers and he just chats with them, which is really cool. You can even do stuff like, um, so say for example, you're writing a whole series and your series has like a brand of alcohol that you've created yourself and it's like um, original to your world. You can do something where like, if people join your highest tier, you send them like a little, a little bottle every month. Not, you don't have to do alcohol, but it's just an example because we're in Vegas. Um, but it's just like the possibilities are honestly endless with subscriptions. And the majority of people who are joining your subscription are going to be your super fans. So these are the fans who really want to support you and to support the projects you want to work on. So why subscriptions? I have like a lot of reasons that I love subscriptions, um, but I'm just going to go through a few of them. So you have complete control of your business when you do subscriptions. And when I say that, like you have control of your refunds. Um, if you don't want to give somebody a refund for the content that they consume, you don't have to give them a refund. And this is like really important when um, looking at the recent trends that will hopefully be resolved by the end of the year, um, where people read entire books or consume entire loads of content and they'll, then they'll just return it to retailers. Um, so you really have control over almost every aspect of your business when you're running subscriptions. Another thing is you have a more personalized community. And let's be honest, like it's really hard to foster a community um, of readers through retailers when they're just buying one of your books. You try to get them to like your Facebook group or you try to get them to your newsletter, but it's difficult. Um, and you, you don't have their name, you don't have their email, you know nothing about this reader, just that they bought one of your books. But with subscriptions, and specifically on Patreon, you get a bunch of data. You get their name, you get their screen name, their email, when they joined your Patreon, when they upped their tiers, when they deleted their pledge, literally anything you could want, you have right there. And you also can directly message your reader if you want to kind of form that deeper connection with your audience. Next, um, which I think is really, really cool, um, when you release on retailers, you can only release at pretty much one price. So you have like a $4.99 ebook, readers can only buy that ebook for $4.99 and that's it. 
With subscriptions, you can have them buy in at many different price points, um, which are basically called tiers. I'll get into that specifics a little bit later, um, but you can have three tiers. You can have one tier, you can have three tiers, you can have 20 tiers. Not that that many is recommended, but you can have the tiers priced at $3 a month, and I know somebody who has a price tier of $200 a month who actually has people in that tier paying her $200 a month. Um, so really cool. Um, and lastly, I'll just go to the next slide. So um, authors get to keep 80 to 90% of their earnings through Patreon or just through subscriptions alone. And this is really amazing when you're looking and comparing it to other platforms like such as Amazon or Google Books, um, eBooks, you're getting 30 to 35 to 70% audible audiobooks, you're getting anywhere between 20 and 40 usually. Um, those serialized platforms I was talking about, like Radish and Vela, as well as Webtoon, which is a graphic novel place um, where you can uh, release serialized content, that's 50%. And then you get kind of lower and lower um, with interactive stories and traditional publishing. So there are currently two big subscription models that people are utilizing. Um, and I will go into both of them. This presentation is mostly going to focus on early access because that's what I do. Um, and that's what I'm most comfortable talking about. So early access is basically providing your content early before it goes on retailers. And I provide content that's rough drafts. And I'll get into a few people who do early access as well. So we have Sher Loon, who does lit RPG. And he has about 7,000 people who are supporting him monthly. And based on his tiers, he's making anywhere between $7,000 and $350,000 per month, which is a crazy amount of money. Um, and so those people who are subscribing aren't just subscribed for one month. They're staying with him consistently. So he's consistently getting that amount between that, that range. Um, we have Lily Dusk, who's doing uh, steamy, I'm pretty sure steamy romance graphic novels. She has about 11,000 subscribers and making anywhere between 11,000 and 110,000 a month. Teffler, who I believe just science fiction, but I could be wrong. Um, he has about 4,500 monthly supporters and he charges per chapter and he gets about $7,500 per chapter. And like, I'm pretty sure he probably doesn't have just one chapter in his book. So if he has like <laughs> a few chapters, he's making, a, he's making quite a good amount of money um, just by releasing early access. So then we also have um, exclusive access and bonus content, which is really cool, I think, um, to be able to provide different things. So early access or exclusive access is mostly like bonus scenes or maybe deleted scenes, merch. You can honestly do whatever. We have Kay Webster who has 80 subscribers and she's getting $8,000 per month just off of 80 people. We have Willow Winters who has 300 subscribers and she's making anywhere between 1,500 and 7,500 a month. And then we have Katie Robert who has about 2,200 people and she's making anywhere between 10,000 and 68,000 per month. And I've done some research on like the top, um, I want to say like 20 subscription authors. And it's honestly kind of split. So like half of them are doing early access and half of them are doing exclusive access. But the majority of them have, like, if you're there doing early access, they have a little bit of exclusive access in there. So for example, Lily Dusk, she's releasing early content on her Patreon, but she also offers not safe for work scenes where she can't post them anywhere else because like social media, you can't really post that kind of stuff. So she has that kind of option, like, you get early access, that's her main model, but you also get this exclusive not safe for work content. And kind of going back, I told you that I had a subscription that failed. And so kind of like, I, the reason why my first one failed, I was writing under a different pen name and I had been releasing on a free platform called Wattpad. And I was publishing and the books were becoming very, very popular. I was getting like millions of views per week on the platform. But those people were really used to reading for free. Um, and I was three books in and I decided to start my Patreon. And some people joined. Like I think I got up to $1,000 a month at my highest on uh, that platform. 
um, are under that name. But I was offering mostly bonus content, and it wasn't really what my readers, what I had conditioned my readers to expect from me. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but I would say, like, if you're a beginner author, you probably want, and you want to start with subscriptions, I would say start with the early access model because exclusive access and bonus content really do well for people who have an established audience who really are like immersed in their world and want to like have that extra content. They want those bonus scenes. They want merch from that world. It's really hard to provide that extra bonus content when you don't have yet, you don't yet have fans who are like super into it. So early access, I'm going to kind of dive into this a little bit deeper. Um, early access for me, it means I'm releasing my rough drafts and people are paying to read my rough drafts, which is kind of crazy like, to think about because everyone thinks like you're, in order for anyone to pay for your writing, you have to like have it to be perfect. And all of my rough drafts have typos in it. They have grammatical errors. I have some, some of my like Patreon supporters come to me and they're like, hey, like you should fix this. This is a little bit of a little mistake. And so I'll, I'll fix it. And what's really cool is like these readers who are supporting me and reading my rough drafts, they want to be part of my writing process with me. They want to be part of the creation process because that gets them like immersed into the world a little bit more. And so basically how I release early access is I do, I'll kind of put out my schedule. So week one, I'll release chapter one to Patreon. Week two, I will release chapter two to Patreon. And then chapter one, I'll set as free on Wattpad or through my newsletter. And then I'll consistently kind of funnel people from Wattpad or my newsletter into my Patreon by saying like, hey, I have one extra chapter that you can read early before it's released next week on my Patreon if you want it. And you might think like, who is going to pay a membership, a monthly fee, just to read early access? So I have a little graph. Um, <laughs> you can see a lot of people, um, as long as you're doing it correctly, and I'll, and I'll get into that in a second. But this is, I'll just break this down a little bit. I started, or I actually opened officially my Patreon under my Amelia Rhodes name, I think in January of 2019, which is why you see kind of nothing going on. Um, and then I kind of pushed it to the side because I was like, I don't know if I actually want to do this. My first one kind of like flopped and I'm starting a whole new pen name with no readers. So then I opened a, another Watt, a Wattpad account um, and I was publishing consistently on Wattpad and my Patreon using that early access model starting in August of 2019. And some people started to trickle in um, little by little. It, it definitely takes time. And then in November 2019, I was kind of getting my footing in the genre, and I hit a really great trope, I guess. Um, I was writing a steamy paranormal romance with these like very toxic alpha males that everyone seemed to like love for some reason. And so I was like, all right, let's let's roll with it. And so it kind of just took off from there and kind of exploded. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing, so. Um, I've kind of tweaked things, and this is my Wattpad funnel, and this is how I got it to explode, basically. So my Wattpad funnel and my newsletter funnel are basically the same thing. I have my chapter, and at the end of the chapter, I have a cliffhanger, and these aren't the best cliffhangers, um, but I usually have really good cliffhangers at the end that make the reader want to, they like don't even want, they need to read the next chapter. and so. I leave it at that and I put a little author's note at the end to connect with my reader and kind of fo start forming that community and that bond with my, my reader. So I say like basically like, hey, what do you think is gonna happen next? What did you think about this chapter? Please comment below. And that kind of sparks the conversation and gets them talking in the comment section or even start talking to each other. Because sometimes you kind of have to like provoke them to start talking to each other or they won't. Um, and then at the very end I have Hey, if you want to read this next chapter, I have up to chapter 35 available right now on my Patreon. You don't have to, you don't have to jump on Patreon to read it. I'll release the next chapter next week. But if you want to release, or if you want to read it early, you can at this link, and I'll put the link. 
And the same thing happens in my newsletter funnel. So I have the chapter, I have a cliffhanger, and then I have a button directly to my Patreon. You might be thinking like 10% of people who like, like that's not a lot. Um, but if you have like 10,000 people opening your email um, and 1,000 people click, and this isn't going to happen all at once. Like, it's going to happen over an extended period of time after you continually drop chapters. But if 1,000 of those people click and subscribe to you at $5 a month, that's $5,000 a month where all you're doing is releasing early access to rough drafts that you were already going to create. Like, there's no extra work in it besides putting the little author notes and putting the button. You're still doing the same amount of work you would do if you were publishing on a retailer but you're getting paid for it. <laughs> so um, another thing I really like about this model, um, or just to kind of like put things into perspective, if you have somebody who's subscribing to you for $5 a month, just for one month, they're going to be way more valuable to you uh, through a subscription than somebody who buys one of your eBooks at $5 for a 70% royalty rate. And it's not just about the money, like you're going to get more money through subscriptions, but also you get to form that deeper connection with your reader. You get they get access to you and you get access to them. They can like comment and give you feedback and you don't even have to take the feedback if you don't want to. Um, but it's just having that connection with them and really building a community. It's very, very, very beneficial. And what's really cool is once you like cultivate this community, um, at least for me, I've been able to give my readers the rough draft and then I give them an art copy as well a week before. Um, it's a, published on uh, retailers. And then a lot of them will comment already and be like, oh, I already pre-ordered the book. And I just sit there very confused. I'm like, I, you have the rough draft. I gave you this for free. Why did you pre-order it? Like, you didn't have to. You already have it. And it just all comes back to them wanting to support the author and really wanting to like help you out. And it's, re it's really cool. But some top tips um, for these funnels um, for early access. Uh, would be kind of really focused on getting your author notes and building that community in the author notes and do really, really good cliffhangers. So cliffhangers are a part of serial fiction, which we talked a little bit about before. And I found that serial fiction has done very well um, with subscription models. And basically this is because like when you drop a book, say on a retailer, the, per the, the reader gets to read the book and they, they might read it in a day. They might read it in a week. But when you're releasing early access and dropping a chapter every single week, they are now reading the book over an extended period of time and they're immersed in your world for an extended period of time. So think of it as like Netflix, binging Netflix when they drop a whole season versus Game of Thrones. So when you binge Netflix, you might be thinking about the story or the show for like one to two weeks and then the kind of hype kind of dies down. But Game of Thrones, they release a one episode every single week. And so you're kind of immersed, you have to be immersed in that world for like basically 10 weeks, two and a half months. And so at least for me, when I watch Game of Thrones, I'm constantly thinking like, they always end on a cliffhanger. So you're always like, what's gonna happen next? I need to know. I'm like talking to all my friends, talking to my husband, trying to like come up with theories and I'm reading memes throughout the entire week and trying to figure out what's gonna happen. And that happens for two, like two and a half months. So you're, they're constantly in your world when you release through serials. So kind of shifting gears, we're gonna talk a little bit about tiers. So tiers are something that you need to have set up um, in order to have a subscription. And you could just have one tier. Um, I think it could be free, but I would not recommend it um, if you wanna get paid. Um, a lot of people start their tiers when they start, they don't like asking for money, um, but I don't recommend starting at $1 a month. Um, I would recommend starting at three or even preferably $5 a month um, for it to be kind of successful. And again, in your tiers, I'm just gonna skip ahead a few, I'll come back. Um, you really need to be able, you need to be providing what your readers want. If your readers like, really love your content, you have to make sure you're providing the content that they love. So a, a quick story, I, um, after my Patreon kind of got steady and I was 
making a consistent income, I started doing audiobooks and I was producing these really high quality audiobooks because I was like, audiobooks are the next big thing, like everyone on my Patreon is going to love them, it's going to be amazing. And so I put the audiobooks in my $5 tier um, and I was like, hey guys, if you guys want to listen to my great audiobooks that I just made, um, why don't you bump up to my $5 tier? My lowest tier was $3 at the time. And nobody was nobody was jumping off and I was like, come on guys, like these are really awesome. You should want to like listen to them. And still nobody was kind of nobody was jumping out. So I was like, let's tweak it and let's figure out what's going on. Um, let's try something else. And so I started releasing a new book at ten dollars a month. So twice the amount of my audiobook tier. And I had a lot of people jump up from three dollars to ten dollars just to read that extra book. And so it's constantly, you have to constantly tweak what you're offering because something might not be working, but then something might connect really quickly. Um, so yes. Um, kind of going back a little bit. So these are my tiers. Um, and this is what you'll see when you go on anyone's Patreon. You have basically your little logo, um, what you write. I write to your romance, so I put pictures on my tiers that are of really sexy guys um, to kind of entice people to come in. Uh, and I also have, when you're setting these tiers up, you can label them whatever you want. It doesn't have to be tier one and tier two. And I actually recommend finding your own little names for them. The majority of people who do really good in subscriptions have specific names. They don't do tier, like tier one, tier two, like I did. So don't, don't follow my footsteps in that aspect. Um, but I clearly tell people what they're going to be receiving and when they're going to be receiving it. Um, I have a schedule. Yeah, so I tell them exactly how many chapters they're going to receive, what days um, of what books. And you don't need this much, this amount of content to start. Um, this is me building up a lot of content over the past three years. So when I started, I was just releasing one extra chapter a week. And I've gotten to like a full-time income with just like one or two chapters extra per week that I was writing. Um, so, yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Um, so next is community building, and I think this is where you should definitely put your time when thinking about building a subscription. So as I said before, I had a Patreon that failed, a Patreon that did really well, and this is actually my Patreon that I, this isn't a Patreon, but I started a Patreon um, this month on November 1st, and I started releasing a graphic novel, which is completely new to me. I've never released a graphic novel before, but I did the same exact funnel that I did with my writing. So I released my first chapter free on a website called Webtoon. And at the end of the chapter, I had an author's note and it basically was like, hey guys, like thanks for reading. Um, please let me know what you think of this in the comments. I have extra chapters and early chapters that you could read right now if you want to on my Patreon. And you should read my, on my Patreon because I could put the not safe for work content on there. And you have, and so, Basically, I started fostering that community, telling people like, hey, you could have extra chapters if you want them, you don't have to. Um, and then I had people start commenting and I commented back. And I liked all the comments that I could um, just to try to start fostering that community and that connection between me and my readers. And when I started and put this up, I did not, I had a Patreon goal of getting to $300 a month. Um, and I expected nobody to join my Patreon at all. Like, it was the first chapter. Usually for me, it takes like a few chapters for people to get into it and join. Um, but I ha was able to get a few few people on my Patreon um, and I got to, I hit 10% 10 10 of the way to my goal, which is crazy, but it shows like that this model works and no matter like the, the content that you're putting out. Okay. So, how do you build a community? How do you get people immersed into your world? And so a big part of that, and I would say the majority of that, is interaction. You want to constantly interact with your, your readers. And I know 
It's very time consuming, but an interaction can mean liking one of their comments, responding to them, even like sharing, they might, might have shared like a picture on their Instagram story, just resharing that. And it, me it means a lot and it starts forming that connection between you and the reader. And it shows like, hey, I see you, I see and I appreciate what you, what you are doing for me. So. Another big thing is giveaways, um, kind of, yeah, giveaways are giveaways. Um, we can also foster community through TikTok collages and Pinterest um, and immerse readers into worlds through these like trends. So for example, on BookTok right now, um, if you create a collage that's like 15 seconds long and pair it with music and put it out there, you can immediately immerse somebody into the world that you're writing and have them feel emotion from it. So they like want to be in that world. Um, based off of just a couple pictures that you chose. You can also do shared Spotify playlists and shared newsletters, which are really cool. You have people who are contributing to your newsletter and contributing to your playlist to kind of make your worlds even better. Um, you can also use AI bots. I'm not gonna get into this, but if you're interested in talking about AI, I'm definitely, definitely interested in finding me later. Um, and then you can also do role-playing games. So we're gonna kind of switch a little bit um, and talk about mindset, because mindset is huge when thinking about subscriptions or thinking about starting a subscription. When you release content on a retailer, you're releasing a commodity. You're releasing something that somebody can buy, whether it's physical or just an ebook, they're gonna buy it one time. Whereas when you're releasing content through a subscription, you are providing access for people that in that access can be taken away at any time they stop pay, like paying that monthly fee. And it's not only just access to your content, but it's access to your community and it's access to you. So that's something kind of big. Um, and it's just like a much different commitment that the reader is going to make. So like purchasing an ebook at $4.99 it, it could be hard to get people to buy an ebook, but it's probably going to be easier to get them to buy an ebook than it is going to get for them to buy into a monthly subscription from you. So it's not going to happen overnight. Like a lot of people quit before they find success because they just like think it's not working. But if you keep fostering that community and keep providing content on a consistent schedule, then your readers are really going to see that and they're gonna start kind of like supporting you more and they're gonna wanna tell their friends like, hey, this person's really consistent and she provides a lot of great content on her Patreon, you should join it. So, but it's not gonna happen overnight. Um, and another big thing is how you view your customers. So, uh, this is kind of big for me. Um, you do not want to view your super fans as money. That's a huge, like that's really big, really big. A lot of your super fans might have money to spend on you and spend on your subscription, but there are some fans who will not subscribe to you. And that's fine, but if they are out there in Facebook groups and they're just like constantly promoting you and marketing you for, for you and, you're, and they're just like your biggest fan, like those people that they're talking to might have, might, might have like disposable income that they, have, they, they can use on your subscription. Um, but don't think of your biggest supporters as just a money grab. They are your biggest supporters. Okay. So here are a couple other ways that I use subscriptions. So I get reader story feedback before I publish on big retailers, and this is using the early access model. So basically I release chapter by chapter and people comment on those chapters as I'm writing them. And when they comment, I can immediately see that feedback. And if they're not liking something in a specific book or they don't like a character, the next chapter I write, I can tweak that. Or maybe, maybe I'm a few chapters ahead that I haven't released yet. I can start thinking about how I wanna tweak that character or tweak the situation so they do like that and they're kind of pleased with it. Um, but also at the same time, sometimes I don't like the way the story's going and I will ask them, hey, I don't like this specific thing. What do you guys think about it? Do you think I should change it in my final final edit? And they'll give me their feedback. And if I see like 
a lot of it is like, yeah, you should change it. Then I'll change it before I release it on the retailers and make the book as great as I can. So essentially, they're paid beta readers. Um, next, I test story ideas before I write them. So I, I release um, content every week. I call them weekly steamy one-shots. Um, and it's basically a thousand word sex scene because I write steamy romance, so very short. Um, and I will release one every single Wednesday consistently. And when I'm ready to start writing a new book, I'll go to my readers and I'll poll them and I'll say like, hey, so I wrote all of these one shots, which one do you want to see made into a full book? And so I will start making, once they choose, I will make that book into like the next book I write. And usually the book they choose is the one that will do really well when I post it on a retailer, to, or when I publish it on a retailer. Okay. Next is just like testing ideas in general. Um, I have specifically put merch here. I'm terrible with merch. Um, I actually had all these ideas for merch and I was like, I'm just gonna give them five. And the two that I really liked were the two that had 3% of people. <laughs> and so um, definitely, this is again, you wanna definitely pull your readers, see what they like, because what you like and what they like and what they want is could be different. And especially in my case, it was. Um, okay, review team. So I also have, alongside my paid beta team, I also have a paid arc team. Um, and these are all people who are supporting me on Patreon. Um, I, whenever I release a book, I basically ask them, hey, you read the book, you got the arc copy already, can you please review? And a lot of times they will review, and as long as you give them the links and make it as easy as possible. Okay, we are gonna jump into a couple case studies really quick. So Kay Webster, she does exclusive access. Um, she runs her Patreon as a fan club, and she offers ebooks, arcs, and discounts. These are the breakdown of her tiers. Might be a little blurry, but she is the author. I admire her so much. She has a $150 tier and a $200 tier. And these are, um, this screenshot is a little older, um, but usually the top tiers, she has them limited, so she, only like 20 or 10 people can join them, and they usually sell out. So those tiers, she's getting like an insane amount of money from only a very small amount of people, or small number of people. But she has her um, subscription set up where it's really personal. She's like providing that community and it's very personal with her reader and says like, hey, this is who I am. She has a cute little video up. Um, and she's really trying to be as close as the reader as possible. Linda Medley, she does graphic novels. Um, again, this is another case where she is trying to be as close as the reader as possible and being very transparent. So she says, like, if we reach this goal of $3,000, then you guys would have paid for all of my living expenses in my specific town or city, which is Seattle. Um, and so that's a goal that her community wants to try to get her to, so she can be possibly doing this full time. We also have V.O. Eros, so he is not an author, but he does storytelling. Um, and he does exclusive access to, and, of, to spicy audios. And again, this is very, very specific and very personal. He's telling you exactly who he is um, and what he does and what you're going to get every single month that you subscribe to him. And I'm pretty sure he, he fosters community really cool because I'm pretty sure he does like um, weekly or monthly, like you watch like watch movies with him, like on Discord, and it's really cool. I, I would have to double check, but I, I'm pretty sure that's how he, he fostered his community. So, yes. So we have actually um, created a master file of the top, I think, like 100 subscription authors that you can find in our Facebook group. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure it's in our Facebook group. I have a, a QR code to it at the end of the thing. And it has a bunch, it's not just romance. 
Um, romance and lit RPG are huge in subscriptions, but there's other genres that are there. So I'll show you that a little bit later. Yeah, of course. And Shirtaloon's not romance. He's lit RPG. Um, he has 7,000 people, about 7,000 people supporting him monthly. And his most popular tier is at $10 a month. And he provides, he tells you exactly what you're going to get. Okay. So some best practices um, for just like subscriptions and even early access um, is if you're going to release early access as you write, Try writing on Wattpad or Royal Road or even release them in your newsletter. Second, the second and third bullet point kind of go hand in hand. So you want to be consistent with your updates and you also don't want to overpromise. If you promise that you are going to publish five chapters a week, you better make sure you're publishing those five chapters a week, like every week. Um, obviously, like you could say something could come up and your biggest fans are going to understand as long as you explain it to them. But if you're consistently not being consistent, it's going to be a problem and people are going to lose trust in you. So you want to over, or under promise and then over deliver. And then the last two kind of go hand in hand too. Um, you want to constantly tweak your offers and your rewards. Um, I do this all the time, at least three times a year. Um, I'm constantly giving new rewards to tiers and taking some rewards away and I'm very transparent when I do and I tell them exactly why um, I'm doing what I'm doing. And then this is just figure out what your fans want. If they don't want audiobooks, don't give them audiobooks. <laughs> okay, and then I just want to end with some couple of drawbacks just so it's, I'm very transparent with you. Um, Patreon does have some content restrictions. So especially if you write dark-ish, like gore, or torture, or even spicy content, they could definitely pull your account down. I've had my account pulled down two or three times now um, when it didn't really violate the TOS. Um, and they forced me to remove content, and thankfully I've got it back up. But I just want you guys to be aware before you join. Um, there's also some software restrictions. Patreon is not made for fiction authors. It's made for all creators. So if you're releasing early access, like I have, people, and you're releasing chapter by chapter, people have to scroll all the way down. It's kind of like a blog to find the first chapter. So I have like a master Google Doc link um, where people can just easily find things. But there are software restrictions in that kind of sense. Okay. So where to find the latest subscription and membership info and the 100 authors who are very successful, um, you can find it in our Facebook group. Um, it's a Subscriptions for Authors Facebook group. This is going to lead you to our Subscriptions for Authors website. We just basically give you info, as much info as we can. Um, and we also run a bi-weekly podcast. So I'm going to leave the QR code up so you can, you can find it. Um, but I'm open to any questions. say you constantly tweak your offers and rewards can you tell me more about how you change it up and what the incentive is um, if people don't want to lose what they already had or if you're trying to find new subscribers yeah so that's that was one of my reasons why I didn't take audiobooks down because some people were telling me they really like them um, but for example uh, I recently added a reward to one of my higher tiers um, and it was just giving them some like extra content. But whenever I take some stuff down, um, I think I did art prints at one point. I, I started doing them again, but I had taken it down because like it wasn't profitable for me and not enough people were in that tier. So I just kind of explained like, hey, uh, not enough people are in this tier for me to actually continue to do this. So that's okay. Hi, um, so my question is, when you've released all the early access rough drafts and then you release an art copy. Now obviously you've got the super fans who are like, I'm going to go out and buy it anyway just because I want to support you. But are you worried at all about cannibalizing your sales on Amazon to the degree that it influences the, the rank? Not Because you're going to be making more direct money mm -hmm. from, from Patreon. But are you worried that those readers who would have gone out and bought that first week of launch are now not buying 
which tanks your rank a little bit, which tanks your visibility? Um, me personally, no, because a lot of those, a lot of my supporters do go out and pre-order, um, but I value my relationship with my, my reader a lot more on Patreon because I have that connection with them um, and I rather them have a subscription through me than be on buying on a retailer and a way I kind of um, kind of like not stop that because you can't really but um, I have a long pre-order so as soon as I know a book is going to be finished I'll put a pre-order up for like nine months in advance or like 12 months in advance to grab as many people that are not on my subscription as possible does that make sense sort of <laughs> all right thanks Oh, okay. Am I good? Yes. All right. So, different patrons join at different times. How do you start at one for each new patron? Like, So, unfortunately, like, you can't really do that on Patreon. So, basically, like, say I have ran up to chapter 35 on my Patreon. Then, if somebody's just starting and they haven't read any of my story yet, they would get access to chapter 1 to 35. Oh. Yeah. And the other patrons don't get upset about that? No. Not usually. Okay. I, yeah, they, I haven't had any complaints at least. All right. Thank you. Yes. Hi. I had a question about, um, you were saying for your first draft, you, um, or like you do the early access or release. What happens when you're like writing and then you realize you make a change that affects previous parts of the story? So I actually write very cleanly um, and it's something I have kind of honed, I guess, for the past few years because this is how I've always like read and write, like wrote. Um, and so I write as if I am the reader and I don't know what's going to happen next. So I usually don't have anything big that I need to put like that will change everything um, and if I do like I think in a previous slide I had something like similar um, and I asked my readers like hey what do you think of this um, should I change it I will continue the story the way it was originally going and then when I before I publish on a big retailer then I will make those big changes so the book could be a little bit different when you get it on a retailer. Thank you. Yeah. At what point are you taking your books down from Wattpad and Patreon? At what point in the publishing process? Before you publish them on the retailer so that you're not losing that? So I usually, I don't take them down from Patreon. You definitely can, um, but I personally don't. Um, I take them down from Wattpad a week before they publish on big retailers. Okay, because I thought you removed Stepbrother, that's why I was curious. I had, well, I had to remove Stepbrother from Patreon because they forced me to. Okay, oh, that's what it was. Okay, yeah. that's what it was. I couldn't <laughs> remember like, seeing the post. I was like, she took it down on me. Okay, yeah. perfect thing. Yeah. Patreon. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, they, so when I joined Patreon, they told me I could write Game of Thrones level material. So I wrote a Stepbrother story where the main characters were step-siblings, but they had known each other before their parents even knew each other. So they were dating before their parents knew each other. Um, and they were both 18, and they were like, no, that's incest, you have to take it down. And I was like, okay, I guess. <laughs> so I took it down. One more? Okay. I had a question about um, Vela versus Wattpad. Yes. Um, so, do you think you seem to be like have it for free available on a free reading service so then you can get them on patreon mm -hmm. does vela fit into your model at all so i don't do vela i do radish um i just don't like uh, i don't like the restrictions with vela um but i do have radish so i'll do radish right after um it's published on retailers like that's when i'll publish it in like the serial serial format on serial websites because vela doesn't let you do that yeah i think it has so. to be exclusive yeah Is that what you're saying? okay i think cool. I, I believe so oh it doesn't anymore oh yeah maybe that's what it was why i didn't have it on 
Okay. Yeah. It's too confusing for me. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can find me after the presentation. Yeah.